look lovely. Thank you, so do you. Before we get into it. <laughs> He's not very bright, is he? It appears not. Um, it, it's difficult to know. I mean, he certainly seems to contradict himself a lot. I mean, mm. I don't see how any rational human being would expect a reconciliation with their family after saying the things he said. I mean, they're venomous. I mean, it's, it's shocking. I mean, I, it's hard to imagine any other story of celebrities, let alone members of the royal family, who've being so venomous towards their family. <laughs> In third grade, I cheated on my history exam. In fourth grade, I stole my Uncle Max's toupee and I glued it on my face when I played Moses in my Hebrew school play. In fifth grade, I knocked my sister Edie down the stairs and I blamed it on them. Send me to a, to a summer camp for fat kids. And then was during lunch, I got nuts and I pinged down and they kicked me out. Do you know what the problem is at this point? And and it just it just occurred to me, right? He he's doing this thing that there's that friend or one or two friends that you have on social media who do this thing, right? You have one or two friends, maybe more, and they do this thing where um, they always share when they're at the doctors. They always share when they're at A and E. They always share when they've got an illness and the doctor hasn't listened. They always share when their ex is said something that they haven't liked and oh isn't it negative and and they tone it in such a way that you're like oh you feel sympathy for them and they do it over and over and over and over again and everything that anyone says to them or does to them whether it's a family member um a husband an ex-husband an ex-partner um anyone the doctor, they share it and w we have to reach within ourselves to, to find sympathy and they do it repeatedly. Mm -hmm. Weirdly, they're the same ones who will have a positive experience, do something positive and they'll stick that on social media and, and paint it as though it's the most exciting thing that's ever happened to them and uh, that's ever happened to anyone ever and um, aren't they lucky because nobody else had these experiences. I got hold of a copy of Prince Harry's new book and found a hidden message. Help me. Meghan is a f***ing psycho. She controls everything I do. I can't even have a sh** without asking her. If I had a rabbit she would have boiled it by now. Please forgive me UK. I need you. Well, the most disastrous thing if you're talking about privacy, if you're talking about owning a story in a narrative, why has he put his family in danger by giving away his track record in, in Afghanistan? I mean, if you look at Twitter in Pakistan and Afghan, they're calling him a murderer and a crusader. He's put a, he's put a target on his back for him and, his, and, his, and if he's protecting his family and particularly his wife from all family, he's put them in the greatest danger because I don't believe that they've got the same level of security he would have enjoyed um, whilst he was a member of the royal family. Harry says William called Meghan difficult, rude, and abrasive, which Harry then said was a parroting of the press narrative and that he expected better of Prince William. He says, Prince William grabbed me by the collar, ripping my necklace. Why was he wearing a necklace? Some of us would like to know. Okay, Tony, Tony Windsor. <laughs> he grabbed me by the collar, ripping my necklace, and knocked me to the floor. He says that resulted in a visible injury to his back, because he landed on a dog bowl that then shattered. I don't know what kind of dog bowl he's got. Most of us have plastic dog bowls. Okay, that can't cut, your, cut up your back, but whatever. He's a Windsor, so perhaps it's made of, you know, glass. I don't know. Oh, okay. In his upcoming memoir, Spare, Prince Harry is revealing that his brother, Prince William, advised him not to propose to Meghan Markle. Here are the deets. Okay, this is via page six. Prince Harry claims Prince William warned him not to propose to Meghan Markle out of fear. The couple's relationship was, quote, moving too fast. Brotherly advice, I get that. In his bombshell in the memoir Spare, he explained that William shot down the idea that Harry and Marco would, quote, become a foursome with him and Kate because she was an American actress, after all. Yet, as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex got more serious, Harry told William he felt like their late mother Diana helped him, quote, find the suits actress, which didn't sit right with the Prince of Wales. 
After making the bold claim, a concerned William took a step back and told his younger brother he was, quote, taking things a bit too far. Despite William's hesitancy, the couple got engaged in 2017, a little over a year into their relationship. When it came to choosing a venue, William shot down the idea of Harry and Markle getting married at Westminster Abbey, where he and Middleton had tied the knot seven years prior. He also didn't want the pair to choose St. Paul's, where Princess Diana and King Charles went in 1980s, in the 1980s, because it apparently was, quote, too grand for their nuptials. While the wedding caused tension between the brothers, Middleton and Markle's relationship also took a turn for the worse around the same time. The two women got into a now infamous fight over the bridesmaid dresses for the Sussexes' big day, specifically regarding Princess Charlotte's gown. According to Harry, the Princess of Wales texted Markle just days before their wedding about a problem with the fit of her daughter's frock. Middleton told the actress that Charlotte, now seven, burst into tears once she tried on the dress because it was, quote, too big, too long, and too baggy, and it needed to be completely redone. After Middleton finally agreed to bring the youngster to the palace to get alterations, the two women got into a heated argument, which left Markle in tears, quote, on the floor. Although the two were able to make amends the following day, the same can be said for the Fab Force relationship after Spare hits his shells on January 10th. When <sighs> Christ, I'm thirsty. I'm talking about a drink. You're gonna get a drink? I can get a drink. Oh, who the f... Who's done that? F Philip, have you thrown my bowl at one of the staff again? Christ's sake. Drink out the loo again, then. I really appreciate all the love and support. You guys have left me the most amazing messages. I read them all. I really do thank you for taking the time to do that. If you want to further support my efforts to try to get to the coronation, do check out it. I believe it's pronounced coffee, but it's ko-fi.com backslash real housewives recaps. That's where you can find my tip jar. And I'm saving to go to try to go to the coronation. Thank you guys for everything. I appreciate it and have a great day. Bye-bye.